Good morning, and thank you all for coming to the second week of the Galileo Fall K-12 through Showcase. Today, we'll be, we'll be featuring Kristen Drake from the Cap County School System. She will be talking to us about professional learning featuring Galileo. Uh, Kristen, if there's any other introductory remarks you'd like to provide, please go ahead and thank you uh, for being here today and giving this presentation. Well, terrific. Thank you for having me. We'll get started right now. So this is on professional learning. So hopefully the people in the audience have uh, led professional learning before or may take up the opportunity to lead professional learning in the future. So I do work with DeKalb County School District and our theme is disrupting for excellence. So what I really wanna focus on today is what we're doing to engage teachers in professional learning and how to use uh, Galileo as one of those resources. So the purpose when you signed up was to learn how Galileo is featured in professional learning. We're gonna focus on TEAK standard on professionalism and then also on differentiated instruction and academically challenging environment. So why I chose to offer this session, when I started back in the district in 2018, our gifted endorsement program was under modern or status with the Georgia Professional Standards Commission. This was one of the pieces of feedback from one of the teachers who completed the program. The text articles and resources we were required to use were outdated, which would not be accepted by any university professor. Even when I read this this morning, it ached my heart. That was one of the things we really needed to, to do was to update our resources. And then the other reason I think this session is important is what I always hear from teachers is that our students don't have the stamina for reading when it comes to assessments. And I hear this from elementary through high school. And what drove it home to me was I was listening to an online professional learning se session from a, an administrator. And she said how she was listening to an audiobook of a Proust and the Squid, the story and science of the reading brain. And again, I want to emphasize, she said she was listening to an audio book. That disturbed me that we were talking that she was listening to an audio book about reading and that we weren't reading. My entire team also uh, participated. We read, listened to a podcast on reading. And in that whole time, we didn't read an article about reading. And so that's what really drills home the purpose of this session is I want to introduce, reintroduce teachers to reading. So they're using current research and sharing it with other teachers. So, of course, like any professional development you've participated in, we wanted to align it with strategic goals. So the idea of professional learning featuring Galileo affects our staff effectiveness because we want teachers to be the best teachers they can be. It does address student equity and access. And in uh, short, later today, I'm going to show you the resources that we can use with our students. And then finally, it, it uh, emphasizes organizational excellence. So Galileo is a free resource sponsored by the university system of Georgia that all K-12 public schools have access to. So we want to really utilize that resource. So again, I want to connect to the curriculum and instruction, which is the department I work in, and that's we want to transform the learning environment for all our students. I work specifically in the gifted department, and we want to maximize students' academic potential, and ultimately we, what we do is we support teachers. So today what you're going to do is you're going to learn uh, how Galileo is used in professional learning. You're going to learn some of the variety of resources and how to uh, uh, reading protocols can foster deep thinking. So before you leave today, we're going to make sure you can do all these things. Describe how Galileo can be used in professional learning. Identify the variety of resources available. And we're all going to try the four A's text protocol. So we're going to start with professionalism. So this is one of our TEAK standards. We're going to talk about eBooks today. So all of you are here because you wanted to participate in some kind of professional growth. So I want you to take a look at this. Where have you seen these topics? And this is a chance, Joy, if you would unmute and allow anybody to share out or to type in the chat. Where have you seen these topics? All right, Nicole wrote in the chat, tack, in the chat, taps, tap standards or teak standards, whichever you choose, they are the same. They are the standards that are part of teaks. That's the relevance of this. So I want to share with you this book is available in uh, in 
Galileo, and it does address the Georgia Teacher Keys Effectiveness System, or TEKS, or we call them TAPS, the Teacher Assessment on uh, Their Profession Standards. And so I'm going to give you time to explore this in a few minutes, but I'm going to show you it, and then I'm going to give you a chance to play. So when you go into Galileo, which again, all K-12 students, teachers have access to, you're going to select Educator. From there, you're going to search for the book, and I'm going to give you the name of the book today. The book is called Qualities of Effective Teachers. It's by James Strong, but I'm going to tell you why this book is so critical that it's, it is the first book I'll introduce during any professional development, and James Strong is was the lead consultant in the development of TEKS, or Teacher Keys Effectiveness System. So if you want to improve your TEKS score or your TAPS ratings, this is where you want to look at this book, and I'm going to show you some reasons I like it, and and then again, I'm going to give you time to play in just a few minutes. So this is an excerpt of, of the book. It is on page 111. I wanted to highlight this because we're working on student engagement in our district. So I highlighted a key point, varying strategies, including call on, calling on students in random order, providing any necessary additional clarification and illustration, or finding something positive to say when students respond or interact. And what I thought was really interesting is all the engagement activities, they said that uh, that an effective teacher uses nine or more instructional activities within a single lesson. So again, I'm going to give you time to read in just a minute, but I want to highlight another key piece I love about this book, Qualities of Effective Teachers. It has sections on teaching uh, at-risk students and teaching gifted students. So when we're really thinking about differentiating to meet the needs of all students, this is the book that I would recommend. So there's one study that says a typical classroom has 27 students spanning five readiness levels. Let's think about that. A typical classroom has 27 students spanning five readiness levels. Let's think about the number, 27 students. Is that right, a little high or a little low? Feel free to type in the chat or you can unmute and share. What do you think? Do, do you think a typical classroom has 27 students? Don't see anything in the chat yet, but I do see mine spinning. High school a little low. Thanks, Christina. I think so too. High school might have a little bit more than 27 students. Now let's think about five readiness levels. Do you think that's true? Do you think there are five readiness levels in a classroom? Yeah, definitely so. Some people say that it's it's even more than that, but even think considered a kindergarten classroom, you might have students who are reading, who are struggling to identify letters to kids who are actually reading texts um, that may be more, that may have more advanced readers. So that's the key of why we want to to drill home the importance of of meeting different students needs and yeah Christina said 25 to 29 in elementary so again we've got to meet and meet the needs of all learners so yeah too many so what I love about this book is James Strong articulates what teachers need to do for at-risk students in instructional delivery but then he also has a section on teachers of high ability students so again we're thinking about well what are we going to do for this group of population and what are we going to do for this group and then you'll see that there are some similarities that work for all students so you know my background a little bit i i was a classroom teacher for over 15 years i taught in both public and private schools I taught first, second, and third grade, gifted general ed, special ed, and ESOL students. Uh, I taught at Vanderlyn Elementary in Dunwoody, where uh, we had a more upper middle class, upper class population. And when I would present at conferences and schools, people can say, you can do that in Dunwoody. Can you do it elsewhere? So I transferred to Title I school in Doraville. Uh, I saw another Doraville teacher on this call, uh, where I replicated my classroom to show that good strategies work for all students. But again, what I love about this author is he makes the distinction between what tweaks do you need to make to reach the needs of high ability students or struggling students or English language learners. So now I'm going to give you time uh, to explore. So I want, I said already that there's 27 students spanning five readiness levels. In this class alone, there are going to be uh, a, a population, a variety of, of levels here who can participate in this this activity so you're going to go to galileo and i'm going to ask joy to pet, uh, put two 
links in the chat. And one is a link just to Galileo. And the second link is a link, a link to the book itself. And the reason I want you to have access to both links, because some of you are going to say, look, I'm just not computer literate, or it's too early in the day, or I'm, I'm trying to do too many things. You're just going to want to go right to the direct link. And that's absolutely fine. But some of you, again, what I want you to do is experience what it's like to search. So I want you to go to Galileo, and I want you to be able to click, and I want you to be able to type and search for qualities of effective teachers. What I want you to do is use either the index or the table of contents to find one topic of interest. And I want you to be prepared to share one piece of research from the book or, or something that intrigued you. So I'm going to take about five minutes and I'm not going to talk. I'm going to actually mute myself. And I want you to go to Galileo and I want you to try to find this book qualities of effective teachers and Joy's already put in the chat two links one takes you right to Galileo if you're at a K to 12 school you can start searching right away for that book and then the second link if you can't access it you're going to be able to go right to that book so again I'm going to give you five minutes just to skim the book and see what excites you
I'm going to have you sh share in just a minute, but hopefully you got the experience of what it's like to be a, a student, to type in, to find information. If you search for the book, you probably saw a couple copies. You probably saw a brown copy, which was the early first and second editions, and then this more colorful uh, cover, which was the third edition. But I want everybody to experience the process. Part of it, for some people, it'll be very easy and very natural, but for others, it might be a little bit of a struggle, and we want to experience that because we want to know exactly what kids experience. So right now I want you to think about a book study in your school. How might a book introducing this book lead to greater teacher efficacy? And another question might be, how is a book study used at your school? So Robbie Barber at Tucker said, I know I've read this in the past, so she went straight to chapter eight. The subsection on communicating clearly is to the point. Teachers have to be able to communicate in multiple ways. Thank you. And Robbie emphasized something else. Even though we've re read something before or we've heard something, that the refresher helps us remind us to try something new or to put emphasis on it. So thanks for sharing. So right now I'd like anybody to either unmute or to type in the chat, how might introducing this book, Qualities of Effective Teachers, lead to greater teacher efficacy? Or how is a book study used at your school? Would anybody like to unmute and talk about uh, book studies in their school? Or type in the chat. And I love it, Nicole said, uh, cultivating a positive and supporting learning environment. It's not just teacher student or student student relationships, but it's also the way the students embrace the content. Yes, absolutely. I do believe a sense of belongingness is really what takes a classroom from good to great. So thanks for sharing that, Nicole. And Joy said um, she was just looking at the first chapter and it seems that it's not rocket science that a teacher who has vi high verbal skills produces students who perform better educationally. Yeah, those are the teachers who uh, were voting Local, who are the ones who want to also teach their kids to be that way as well. And Mandisa said the book study can define expectations through guidance. This allows all stakeholders to be actively involved in effect, uh, effectively, absolutely. So by giving this information, this helps us take ownership of our own progress and really empowers teachers. So that's very exciting. Thanks for sharing that. Now I want you to think, why do we talk to others about books, movies, and television shows? What would be the purpose in doing that? And you can unmute or you can type in the chat. Why do we talk to others about books, movies, and television shows? Absolutely. Robbie said, share a common experience. Christina said, encourage others to check them out. Absolutely. We want them to read the book or see the movie that we're watching so we can talk about it, to share something we liked, and we want others to see or experience it. Absolutely. So that's what we want to do with our teachers. We want to get them talking about, about their craft to encourage others to check them out, to share something we liked, and we want others to see and experience it. Absolutely. So I want to share, and Nancy was just in the meeting, but she had to go. Uh, this is Nancy Lorenz. She won uh, the American Stars of Teaching from the Georgia, De or from the U.S. Department of Education uh, several years ago. She and I were co-teachers together, and I want to share about collective teacher efficacy. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Harry Wong. If I basically, if I have a dollar and you have a dollar and we switch, we both still have a dollar. But if I have an idea and you have an idea and we switch. Now we have two ideas. We're richer for the experience. And I really believe with all my heart that I became a great teacher because of working with Nancy Lorenz. So I want to show you our classroom. And so when I think of the difference between self-efficacy versus collective teacher efficacy. So uh, most of us are familiar with John Hattie's research on, uh, on factors that influence the, the, uh, our classroom and that a teacher effect size, a standard teacher effect size that's circled on your screen is 0 0.40. So in a normal classroom, the, uh, room, the effect size is 0 0.40. But I want to draw your attention to something new. The effect size of collective teacher efficacy, that, efficacy that's the belief 
in the ability to positively affect students, but it's a collective belief. The effect size is 1.57, and I was intentional in copying this picture. This came from um, uh, his book, Visible Learning, that notice the scale only goes to 1.20, but the effect size of is 1.57. So this is his number one uh, strategy for improving student ach achievement. So again, so collective teacher efficacy, the idea not just it's me trying to grow myself, but I'm trying to uh, refine my craft and perfect it with others. So right now, I want you to type something in the chat if you haven't already, something that interested you in the book. So qualities of effective teachers, I want you to type something if you haven't already something that you thought that intrigued you. And if it didn't, if you weren't able to access the book at all, or if you were called to other things or have other distractions, I want you to think about what I told you. I told you that it has uh, sections for those who are struggling. It has sections for gifted learners. It goes along with teaks. What is something that you liked in the, about that book? I want you to type it in the chat. And then what I'm asking you to do is share with someone at your school after today's session. So again, the idea of collective teacher efficacy is that you're getting an idea and you're talking with somebody else about it. Because if you chat with somebody else about it, that's what's going to lead you to deeper thought and your colleague to deeper thought. So again, I want to highlight the importance of collective teacher efficacy. So now I'm going to transition to another ebook, and we're going to talk about academically challenging environment. And so I want you to think about what you can do to empower your students. So I'm going to share some data. So this is one of our school's data in our district. They had 55 students who were eligible for step two testing ad addressing creativity. So we give some assessments for creativity in the in the state of Georgia and in our district. And of those 55 students, only four of those students earn qualifying scores for creativity. So this addressed a need that we need to address in the in our school. So right now I'm going to show you this resource. And before I go on, Tamara had a good point. She said the well-rounded consideration with the different performance diversities of students in the classroom. That's what we're getting at right now. So that's a perfect segue, Tamara. Thank you. So I'm going to show you this again is this is the main page for Al uh, for Galileo. And in just a minute, I'm going to ask Joy. She can uh, put in the chat. She's going to put the direct link to the book. Now we don't we don't have time. I could have you search for this, but you can see it's a long title. So Joy, when you get a moment, if you would put in the chat the link for Sparking Student Creativity, Practical Ways to Promote Innovative Thinking and Problem Solving. And so this book, uh, awesome, thank you. This book, I'm going to give you four examples, and this is just what I would do. So that school that I mentioned that had 55 students uh, who, who needed qualifying scores in creativity, and it only had four students I presented at their school. And this is one of the ideas that I presented. These were directly from the book. I actually copied and pasted this from the book. So their grab and go idea was trading cards. So if you're my age, um, you probably are familiar with baseball cards. This concept is the same idea, except it's with trading cards and it's based on content. So what I love this idea for right away is your social studies historical figures. In the elementary school, you have Jimmy Carter, you have uh, Rosa Parks. There's lots of people that students study that they can create training cards uh, based on the characteristics and what they've learned about that student that uh, historical figure. There's another grab and go idea that's called starter phrases. So if you've had any background in gifted education, we know that there's a uh, flexibility, fluency to get kids to think about uh, different ideas and concepts. There's uh, also originality. So what these starter phrases do, they help kids Think of ways to do something differently. So this is how might you design, list ways to develop, invent something. So these starter phrases, just like all the questioning uh, PL that I lead, this gets a child to think. And what we want to do with these activities, if you'll notice, these are activities you could use with students right away. So this one is a personal favorite, sound effects. The idea that the kids take a book that they've read, fiction, non-fiction, and what they're doing is they're putting sound effects to it. It might be music. It might be um, just like you would see in uh, in early days of film where you hear really focus on the sound effects. Um, that's a great one to get kids engaged. 
And then a fourth idea is called change matrix, and that's where kids take an idea and they decide how could they make it larger, smaller, longer, shorter. It's all these superlatives, these adjectives that they're trying to change a character, or a, a, a figure, an idea in science or social studies. So this really makes kids think critically. Well, now I want you to, I'm going to give you a moment in a, just a couple minutes. This is, again, from the table of contents. Uh, Joy put in the chat. It's called Sparking Student Creativity. And what I wanted to highlight here is the words innovative and problem solving. That's what we want our kids to to be, become. I can hear a former boss, she, she would say, I hate the term 21st century skills. We're over 20 years into the 21st century. So what um, I believe it's Edutopia or project-based uh, learning calls it success skills. These are the skills we want our kids to develop. So people may have a hard time talking about creativity in the classroom, but we can implement it. And it is, uh, it definitely follows under the idea of innovation, of problem solving skills. So I'm going to give you time to play. I do want to show you that it does take some navigation to find these books. So I wanted to show you some screenshots to make you know if you are searching for something and think, uh, it's, it, am I going in the right direction? I want you to know that there's no way to break the system. All you have to do is click. If you see it's blue, it's highlighted. So here I, um, I clicked on and I enlarged it to show you that it says find sparking student creativity. But I want you to see that there's a couple ways to view it. You should be able to read it online or you can download it, download the book. So depending on what device uh, you have, you're going to have access to, to this. And then it'll give you additional information. So I'm going to let you play. Again, Joy has put it in the chat. I'm going to give you not even five minutes to explore that. I want you to find one activity to share with another teacher. So right now you're going to click on that link and I'm going to have you flip through. And if you have time, go ahead and post in the chat what one you like. You can put the page number to, again, help us find things quickly. Uh, if you see something that you like, I want you to share it in that chat. So I'm going to give you uh, just a couple minutes of silence. You're going to look for something in that book, start, uh, Sparking Student Creativity, that you might share with your students or with another colleague. I said I wouldn't give you long. I just wanted you to have those links. If you click on it, then you have access to play later. But I wanted to highlight some information that was shared in the chat. So Pam said students need to understand the process of innovative thinking and feel safe when making mistakes during this process. Absolutely. Thank you. And Tamara agreed. She said um, these uh, activities are very valuable, that creativity piece to become embedded strategies in all classrooms. And yes, all grade levels from pre-K, absolutely. Um, she also pointed out that they'll be, when exposed to these kind of activities, they're going to be more, uh, more likely to qualify on assessments, which will eventually earn more money for our state and for the district level. Thank you for that, for sharing that. So I'm going to move on very quickly because I want to get to a, one more activity that I want you to, to see. So again, what I did was I focused on two different books. Qualities of Effective Teachers was a focus on teacher actions and Sparking Student Creativity was a focus on student actions. So now I want to talk about professionalism again. So I want you to know that there are articles available in Galileo. Hands down, the number one place that I would say teachers should get articles, especially anybody leading professional learning and any teacher 
interested in professional learning, educational leadership is hands down the number one place that I would go for resources. So I want you to know that they're not always easy to find. So I have to use, I wanted to show you where I find things. The advanced search, this particular article that's highlighted here is a recipe for artful schooling. It's about creativity. But I want to show you in our gifted endorsement program, we give the students, the students, which are teachers, we give them a list of articles and tell them to choose two or more of the articles to read from educational leadership. These ones here are from two different issues of educational leadership, but I want to highlight why we do this. The research behind choice is so strong that um, if you give somebody choice, if you give a student choice, that they're going to have greater buy-in. My simple story is the movies. If you and your spouse are going to the movies and you want the romantic comedy and he wants the shoot -em up the action movie and you're going to go to the action movie you're going to have less buy-in so you're going to bring your phone you're going to be less engaged but if you choose and you get to go to the movie that you want to see you're going to have more buy-in and be more engaged and that's the power of choice so i wanted to highlight that the other reason again educational leadership hands down the number one resource i would choose is because the articles are all research-based they are they are vetted they are peer-reviewed that is my number one source for it but i want to tell you it is not easy to find the articles um, and and i am admitting that and joy works for galileo it's not always easy to find it so i wanted you to know my workaround so my workaround is to go to the american the association for supervision and curriculum development it's ascd that's who publishes educational leadership or el magazine and so what i love about their site is they have a picture each of their magazines focuses on a different topic so you may see one of these and you may say oh yeah i want to read all about technology i'm going to go to that one when you click on it you can see i could pay ten dollars for this magazine but i can open up and see the table of contents and i can choose the article or articles that i want to reach read and i can copy those names and then enter them in galileo so I I want you to see that I picked a, per, uh, a, a particular title. Uh, it's called um, Four C's for Better Student Engagement. Again, the source was educational leadership. So this is using that advanced search. So I've got the title and my source and that article comes up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you an article. It actually doesn't look like I have the ability to give you the article. So what I will do is um, usually it has a place where I can attach it. So what I will do is I will um, be, will add that link. Let me click on it and see if I can get that link to you. So great. This should take you to that link. Yep, that'll do you. Sorry for the long link, but double check that in yours and see if that opens up for you and if somebody would give a thumbs up if that opens up it's loading slowly for me but i do believe it's going to load um, give me a thumbs up or you can unmute and say yes awesome thank you so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give you three minutes to skim that article to get the main idea not even three minutes because i want to be able to try the activity so i'm going to show you back my screen what you're reading for so this article four c's for better student engagement again we want to talk about the theme so hopefully uh, when you go leave today you're going to see but think about ways that i tried to engage you so what I want you to do is skim that article and I want you to think about what assumptions does the author hold? What does the author assume when writing that article? And then I want you to think about what you agree with, what you want to argue with, and what you want to aspire or act upon. And I'm actually just going to give you couple minutes just to skim the article to see if you can answer and I'm going to tell you two questions. Um, what do you um, Think about what you agree with. Actually, answer any one of those questions as you read. What assumptions does the author hold? What do you agree with in the text? What do you argue with? And what do you aspire to or act upon? So I'm actually going to ask you to pick one of those questions and be able to answer those. And I love it. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, you can in Galileo filter a search to appear in Educational Leadership Journal. Thank you. She's one of our fantastic teacher at librarians, so that's good information to have.
And I love it. People are already typing in the chat. Any of the answer any of those questions? If everybody would answer one question in the chat. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys typing in the chat. We have just five more minutes, but please take the time before you log off to read what people wrote in the chat. What I love about protocols is I, I first struggled when introduced to them because I thought, well, I'm a, a decent reader. I can read and comprehend the article. But what I realized is the by having a protocol, it makes you think more critically. So right away, I'm looking at the ideas of others and thinking, wait, I hadn't considered that or that is a really good point. The idea of a discussion board is to read and get the ideas and the inspiration from other people. And I love seeing that. So I'm going to go very rapidly. Again, I'm going to ask that you encourage you to read the chat before you sign out today, but I want to go through a couple more things. So the four A's test, text protocol is uh, the structured way to do it is that had we had more time, we would have each gone around and shared what assumptions the author held. Then we would go around in a circle and around and share what we agreed with in the test. Then the ideas that we everybody would have shared what they argue with, and then finally what they aspire or act upon. And that's really the big deal because when I think about what my goal is from any professional learning sessions that I lead with teachers or our endorsement programs is that we want them to make change to their classrooms. So what they aspire to or act upon. So finally, I shared with you that I work in the gifted department and what we want our students to do is to be able to challenge themselves too. So I do believe that is something true for all learners, not just gifted learners, that at some point in their life they're going to be bored and they need to learn how to challenge themselves. So I want to just show you a couple features. I want you to think about uh, how you would use it with kids in your classroom. So I want you to see where I'm showing in the top left corner of Galileo. You do need to switch which grade level that you're going to. So I'm going to go to elementary and I'm going to search. I searched already for rocks and minerals. And what I want to show you is all the resources that are available for you. So here I clicked on rocks and minerals and I found some books, science experiments, some other ebooks. I want to show you some examples, but the key is that there's a variety of resources. So if we go back and think about qualities of effective teachers, one of the areas that James Strong said was teachers offer a variety of resources. And here we have magazines, eBooks, and encyclopedias for our students. I'm gonna show you one, this is a great one for middle school. The topic is Africa. So again, there's uh, magazines, eBooks, encyclopedia, and news about Africa. And again, to speak to the variety, there's activities on map skills and reading charts and graphs, but there's also research that students can partake in. And what I love about it is accommodations. If you haven't done it before, I want you to notice the value in uh, the ability to read aloud or closed caption that it can help by highlighting I showed you here that it highlights the words that is read read uh, that as it reads it aloud but the research behind closed caption is significant that it improves reading fluency it improves comprehension so I strongly encourage teachers anytime they have access to closed caption to make sure they enable it for their students and so now I want to uh, touch base just again on what we wanted you to be able to do, but I'm going to go back to uh, where we had some comments about the article before we sign out. Um, Mandisa said we conditions we cultivate a high expectations atmosphere. Students are so incredibly incredibly sensitive to the 
expectations of their teacher. I agree with the statement. Absolutely. Kids know what you feel and what you expect to, uh, uh, expect from them. I read somewhere comparing children to like dogs that within five feet of you, they sense how you feel about it, about them. And it's because of your heart rate. Imagine that, that the kids know what your expectations are just by looking at you and reading the cues that you have. And in this scientific study, it was on your heart rate. So thank you for sharing that. Nicole said something that I've considered from a new perspective, choose policies that encourage persistence and local school districts having no zero grade policies. So we want kids to think about how we can do something better every single time. And so um, if we set that expectation in your classroom, what would you do differently? Um, that's going to set kids up for greater perseverance. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Tamara said, building the foundation is the key for everything we do. Robbie said, I'd argue about grading the process criteria. How do you measure citizenship? Grades can be too limiting. Absolutely. Um, thank you for sharing that. And uh, Jernita shared, uh, students are sensitive to teachers' expectations. You bet they are. And then Pam said, um, Question number four, an aspiration is to use rubrics and separately grade the process criteria. What impacted their learning and how the product catch criteria, how did they demonstrate the learning? Oh, I love that. So you're grading the kids on, on the process. So that speaks to Nicole's and the perseverance. And then you're grading on the product. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and then Joy said, I believe that you have access to all the, the chat after the session too. Yes, you should be able to access it. So very now, briefly, we went over how we use Galileo. You should be able to describe how to use Galileo in professional learning, identify resources, the variety of resources, both students and teacher, and be able to use a protocol in your classroom. And again, I want to reiterate the importance of professionalism and teacher efficacy. So again, I highlighted in yellow, that's part of our TEAK standard. And again, the effect size of 1.57. And Beverly at Smoke Rise said, since then session is about to know, I wanted to let you know that this session has been uh, recorded. Please, at, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Joy, for posting that. And thank you, Beverly, for, for giving it attention. Yes, so this will be posted on our Galileo cha uh, channel. And I did, I believe with all my heart uh, that I became a great teacher and a great coordinator because of the people that I work with. There's many people on this call who I do uh, consider my friends and colleagues who helped make me a better teacher and a better coordinator. So um, I have shared my LinkedIn. So I do want to connect with you guys because I do believe uh, it's exciting to share ideas and share what we learn and I really want to make it an environment where we have the opportunity to continue to do that. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it and don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions. Thank you again, Kristen, for uh, bringing this presentation to us. Like I learned some stuff like this yeah. is very, this is very good. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone else, as I've mentioned, it is being record was recorded and you can access it on our Galileo YouTube session. Thank you and hope you all join uh, some of the remaining sessions we have later this week. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thanks. Have a good one.